Sometimes people don't think what they are doing. I've seen a crop like 5000 lines in single PHP file, looking like copy and paste from Stack Overflow or NAI tool, not really once. But if it works, then it works, right? So where is the problem, you can ask. Of course, I agree with that point, but the question is, how does it work? And I remember this situation really well, because it was me who wrote the code like that. And since this time, I've, I've learned that even the most basic decisions made without clear consideration can make the project suffer. So today I will talk about the most basic decision that needs to be made in every project. It is about coding approach that should be used, object-oriented or procedural one. I will, try to, I will try to show you advantages and trade-offs of each of them, uh, provide basic concepts that should help you decide about the winning strategy of your WordPress project. The short agenda is talking about the goal that we need to achieve in this video, uh, I will describe the procedural coding approach, object-oriented, we compare them, then I will try to show you an example of extending the system using those approaches and try to answer which of them should be used in your project. So, let's begin! So, the goal of this video is implementing the first business needs in our WordPress application, that are displaying the links to five recently added themes after each post content. The business needs are simple, so I can split them to two technical requirements. The first is Teams custom post type registration, and the second is just creating function for displaying those links after the post content. Those are simple requirements, so let's try to check how we can implement them using different approaches. The first option is creating the code in procedural way. Functionality in this case is organized in liner manner, often implemented in simple files like Teams, Functions, PHP file. It involves defining functions, classes or variables in the global scope, making them accessible and available through the whole application. It focuses on simplicity and fast implementations and reduces the impact of clear boundaries and separated responsibilities. So, to meet the business goal, I just need to create two functions in the Teams Functions PHP file. The first is for registering Teams custom post type in the init action using native WordPress functions. And the second one is creating the function that will generate links to five recently added themes, also using native WordPress functions like get post for querying the database and the content filter that will be used for injecting the uh, HTML file to the post content. If you will decide to use this coding approach, please try to not put everything in your functions PHP file. It will make your code readability and reusability hard as hell. Try to use separation of concert and split up the code to several logically connected files. It is recommended choice for beginners who want to learn how does the WordPress work because it doesn't require a lot of technical knowledge. It is also effective in solving straightforward problems and when fast implementations are needed. It fits perfect here. A common pitfall, unfortunately, is a tendency to write the code without clear boundaries, which leading to too complex and too long files, which makes the maintenance process and code modification over time more challenging. Also, the collaboration might be more difficult because of the risk of working together by many developers on the same file, even with the git merge tools. The second option is object-oriented approach. It organizes functionality into modular and reusable classes. Those classes encapsulate the data, promoting more structure and organized codebase. It focuses on well-defined boundaries and separating responsibilities, making the maintenance process, scalability and code reusability easier over time. So, how to implement our business needs using this approach? The thing is simple. At first, we need to use separation of concern and define modules that will be used to build up the whole application. The first module is the Teams module that will be responsible for managing everything related to Teams. And as you can see here, that's a class that has have constructor and one function. The constructor adds init action, uh, which fires init CPT function that register post time called Team. The second module is the post that will be used for implementing features related to the post. And as you can see here, the constructor adds the content filter that fires add links 
functions that generates five links to recently added teams. It queries the database using getPost functions, iterates over them and create HTML that then will be injected to the host content. Okay, once we have modules, we need to connect them at some point called facade. It acts as your entry point for initializing and accessing system components and delegating complex work to others. It simplifies setup, reduces code complexity and provides a unified interface to interact with underlying systems. That's simple for sale because it doesn't delegate any work yet, but I will handle it in the next chapters. It is also important to, to add that you've just met design pattern. Sounds hard, but it is easy, right? It is better approach for solving more complex problems or building large or medium websites. Of course, it also can be used for simple system and I recommend that because it really doesn't require a lot of work. It improves code readability by representing real-world objects and their interactions, making the code more intuitive and easier to, re to read, understand and debug. For example, it's easier to me to read team has name instead of this long not empty condition. This approach also ensures that the internal details are not available publicly. We have more control over this here, so it might be really useful. And then it promotes reusable components, enhancing code maintainability and reducing redundancy. It also makes the collaboration much easier because the risk related to working together on the same file by many developers is reduced. Um, the developers can work with, without struggling with more conflicts than comparing to procedural approach. One of the key points in this approach is separating responsibilities, which results in more files to, to load. But no worry, you don't need to dive into the dependency hell. Just check out my previous video about Composer and let Composer do it for you. Okay, so let's try to compare those options now. But before we start, please remember that the scores here are subjective and based on my experience, my needs and my habits. So the final score in one doesn't mean that it is always better than another. Please remember about that. So here we have a simple table that describes five terms. I won't be getting through all of them because I don't want to be boring. So if you want to check them deeply, just stop the video and analyze this table. For me, the object-oriented approach wins um, and have score 21 per 25 available points. Procedural approach gets only 14 points per 25, but as mentioned, it is um, subjective and you can try to give your own scores. Um, the object-oriented approach wins in readability, modularity, maintenance, teamwork and procedural one wins in complexity. What about extending the codebase with the new features? Well, let's assume that we need to create another custom post type called spot. In the procedural style, we just need to create another prefixed function that will take care about registering a new custom post type. And that's all. We put them in the functions.php and everything works. In the object-oriented approach, we prepare codebase in another way. We need to create a new module in the same way as others like teams or posts and uh, implement the uh, custom post type registration there and connect this new module to the facade as other ones. This example shows that object-oriented approach is like building from Lego. We just create some structure you know, from smaller bricks and connect everything at one place which builds the whole build. I like this a lot because I just like Lego, so it fits my habits and it relaxes me. Speaking of which, I've bought another one, so if you want to stay up to date and see the results, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Hmm, so which option should you choose? Let me help you decide by telling this simple story about Mark. Mark is the founder of IT company and in the early stages he handled everything on his own, the development process, client relationships and financial aspect. It was pretty easy then because the company was small. However, as the company grew, it became more overwhelming, so he decided to rent some open space and hire more people to handle different aspects of the business. Mark had less on his plate and the company was able to handle more projects. With the new teams, things improved, but also other problems became to arise. For example, 
when the financial team had a meeting when they discuss rates and uh, screaming at each other making a mess other team members have been also included even when they didn't want to be there another issue is that mark uh, prom promised the full transparency so when bill comes and asks about sarah's uh, salary mark just answer providing um, personal information and still, Mark has a lot of him on his head because he was responsible for each team member separately. At some point, Mark started realizing that the more people he had, the more problems need to be handled. He ran a company in a centralized way where everything was dependent on him, so he decided to, to change something. At first, he found a new office with separate rooms for each team and one meeting room. This separation allowed teams to work without unnecessary interruptions, creating a more productive environment. Second, he hired leaders for each team who were responsible for managing people and achieving the company goals. Mark has no longer need to know every detail of each team process, more important was if they achieving the required results. He also decided to reduce the transparency in some aspects. Only authorized team members had access to sensitive information, ensuring balance between trust and efficiency. The centralization improved the company efficiency a lot and opened the doors for more challenging clients. The teams became self-sufficient, micromanagement was reduced and the problems started to be visible in the early stages. For example, when Mark noticed that one team is unnecessary, he was able to remove this team from the company without bothering others. Can you see the analogy of the story to the two programming methods? For me, it's just like transforming from procedural approach to object-oriented. In the first version of company, um, it was like writing procedural code when ev where everything was mixed together in the global scope without clear boundaries. As the company grew and more people joined, it became chaotic and inefficient to work with. Simple changes in one place had impact on others. Working in the same place by several people was also problematic. The second version of the company introduced more organized approach, which was like writing object-oriented code. Creating teams was like creating modules with their own separated responsibilities and behavior. Leaders were like facets that delegate tasks to smaller units. Transparency reduction can be compared to encapsulation, where the central information is hidden to protect it. Hmm, so what is the moral then? Mark started company with growth in mind, so decentralization and object-oriented approach was the best choice since the beginning. Even if it take more time initially, it reduced the cost of change in the future, and that's something that I like a lot. And it also can be compared to our clients. They came to us and invest money to solutions that will let them grow. I've never had a client who come to me and ask for creating solution that will let him uh, sell the same amount of product as they say now. It doesn't make sense. So that's why I believe that the most certain thing in business is a change. So even if I don't plan to rule the world in the first week of running a product, I want to change it at some point. I know that it should change. So if I can be better prepared for this, I would take this. That's why I'm choosing object-oriented approach as default, because it let me be better prepared to change in the future. You're probably thinking, can you finally answer what should I choose? I recommend object-oriented approach by default because it fits my requirements, I see it uh, as more valuable, but when it comes to you, I don't really know. You should decide. Both approaches have their pros and cons, and the decision ultimately rests on your own preferences and needs. Regardless on which op option you choose, it is important to understand why you chose this particular one. For example, if you believe that you will be always solo decision maker, or maybe you won't work in the team, or you create some super simple stuff, or maybe you don't have a lot of technical knowledge, it is okay to use procedural coding style. It provides uh, simplicity and straightforwardness. On the other hand, if you plan to build a solution that will have a long lifespan, or maybe you work in team or plan to build a team that will be managing this product over a year, you have a technical knowledge, I think it is worth to invest some time and use object-oriented approach by default. 
it provides more organized structure and makes the system uh, better prepared for the change that will that I'm sure that will happen at some point. It will also let you grow yourself. Uh, if you will plan to switch the position and find a new job without WordPress, you will be better prepared for this because you have more universal knowledge that will be that can be used in another aspects. That's something that I like a lot. It provides me uh, a lot of value, not only related to WordPress, but also related to me. If you still don't know, try to put yourself in the Mark's shoes and try to answer the following questions. Do I expect problems that may force me to make changes to my process as Mark did? If so, then use object-oriented approach. If you manage to make it up to this point, please let me know in the comments which approach do you use and why. I will be pleased to hear your thought and compare it with my ideas. If you want to stay up to date with the content I create, please remember to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to thumbs up because it will help me to decide if I'm going in the right direction. And that's all for, from my side today. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.